That looks a bit better, folks. I think we're up and running okay now. Uh, so where was I? Oh yes, I have tea. That's the first thing. The big mug. So, um, apologies for that. It's really weird that um, it seems to get its um, network in a twist. And I get very high drops, dropouts on the frame rate. And I have to reset the network connection. Not reset the modem, just reset the network connection. I'm using quite good uh, um, switches and stuff here now. So I'm not quite sure why that happens. But it may need because it all comes out the back of the modem I think it's resetting the network connection to the modem itself rather than anything beyond you know the other side of the uh, uh, 100 oh sorry gigabit link I think that's what seems to um, but I did that three times before it got reset and um, now it seems good. Anyhow, uh, if anyone's listening, give me an audio check, please. Just to make sure we're all good and that you can hear me. It's not distorted or anything crazy. Hope everybody's had a good week. Uh, yet yeah, sorry, apologies for not streaming on Wednesday. I just didn't have much to kind of I didn't prepare that much and I didn't have much in terms of news for the uh, uh, stuff we're waiting on so I just figured you know given that I had a bunch of other stuff to do I'd get on with that rather than uh, doing the stream on Wednesday um, it's a bit better today because I do have some news and things which I'm going to share um, an update on the status um, there's also something I'd like to discuss. We could do some code even, possibly. Um, Let's we'll see how we get on. I do need to set my um, scenes up. I don't have a full face scene here. Um, That's really weird. Oh, so I did set another one up. There we go, we do have a full face. I should probably add to this as well. So you can see this in the corner when I do that. Um, so what have I been doing? Uh, I'm getting something on my nose here, look. I think that could be... Um, tea or something. 
I really wish I could put the um, webcam equidistant in between the two displays but there's just not enough height to do it I may need to readjust at some point to do that it'll be a lot easier then because I tend to look a lot at what's going on on my lower display rather than my upper display until I'm actually editing some things and then it changes um, and I don't think I can easily move this stuff Away. I mean, I could do it there, but it's on the side. Let's experiment with a bit of that for a change, and then I could have my chat on the bottom. Maybe. Why not? Let's have a little change, shall we? Oh, I've got two lots of stats. That's very interesting. I need one of those. How is everyone? Just filling up my screen here. <sighs> right. Uh, maybe I can add a bit more light here. Oh, that move the bloody camera. Ooh, how annoying is that? Oh, well. uh, what's that done? adjust that in a minute right so onward oh hi I post how are you doing yeah I'm good My week, has, my week has improved um, pretty much since the beginning. It's kind of gone uphill. A bit depressing at the beginning, but um, been okay this week. How has your week been? Uh, I should bring some other bits up as well. So let's just do that. Let's go to the other scene. Uh, have that. I think I need to make a slight adjustment here. It's not fitting on the screen. I was just checking on the uh, order status. Um, Try not to dox myself here. So, um, where are we on the board? Because uh, that's quite an important one. 
It was kind of weird this week. At the beginning of the week, there was nothing. There were just... The component order was... Um, what did it say? Waiting for carrier to pick up. So it had already been picked at the end of last week. And it was just waiting for pickup by the carrier. Likewise, the PCB order was... Um, let me see if I can... Okay, I don't think I'm doxing myself. Um, you can see here. This, oh, it's just literally, that's just changed. Before I came on the screen, I looked at this. And the status has changed. That's really good news. So this has been sitting around for ages. This is the um, PCB order. And so it's all the uh, templates, sorry, not templates, the stencils, some tiles, PCBs, etc. And um, for ages that was just sitting there. So the boards have been completed because you get a kind of production status. If you look on the boards, each one of these. Um, by the way, I post. Can I just check, mate? I, I, in in terms of how the screen looks, I should be on the left hand side, and there should be the board camera shot underneath. I know it's very dark, and then the browser should be on the right hand side. Is that how it's coming through? I just better check actually because I wasn't sure if the uh, scene switching. Had work. Something really weird going on with this um, screen positioning. It won't let me. Yeah, so it's it's showing the right scene and stuff. Okay. So anyhow, so for ages, the PCB order was just saying all of these had been completed, so you get a tick. Prior to that, you get like a um, part of a pie chart where the white bit gets smaller and smaller as it complete, as it you know nears completion, and you can go and look at what that means, you know, what the steps are and stuff. So anyhow, that, that's all been completed for some time, and it's just been sitting there. Uh, and I can't remember what it said. Um, and it, then they once once produced, these items get sent to the shipping centre, but they get sent there individually, and they don't always come from the same factory, particularly in the case where. Um, you've got uh, different types of boards. So for example, the most of these are two layer boards with the exception of the ICE Logic Bus, which is a four layer board. So that definitely isn't ne gonna necessarily be in the same factory. But not only that, but even the ones with the same settings can go to different factories. I don't know how many factories they operate, but uh, quite a few. I think they have some of their own and then they may outsource to others. But then they all kind of come together in the um, what they call their um, shipping centre. Um, and anyhow, all of that had happened ages ago, and it was just sitting there and 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 sitting there. And, there. and then this week, um, that changed just slightly, and then you had some really weird uh, bits and weird stages in between and then it got packed and you can see I don't think you can see you can see now what's happened so up until about however many minutes ago um, it said packaged carriers normally pick up shipments on the same day I think or all orders have arrived shipping centre ready. And now it's suddenly changed. Uh, no, in fact, that happened earlier. And then 
I got a tracking number, but then it just sat on the tracking number for days and it didn't move from, um, where do they call it? I don't know how to pronounce that, Zuhai, which is just across the, um, uh, the river from Shenzhen, which must be where their uh, shipping centre is or something. I don't, don't, don't quite know. Most of them just say Shenzhen on them when they they do the shipping. But they, this, I think these guys have a shipping place just over the river, um, in Zhuhai or Zuhai or whatever it's called. Um, it's saying here. So it's picked up, so it's in FedEx's hand. FedEx's shipping shipping uh, facility and system. Um, but it's just, it's saying in transit now, but it, it's still in China. Uh, and I think it's been saying that now for a couple of days. Although this one at the top is slightly different, to be fair. That in transit is new. So yeah, a bit frustrating really. But the weird thing was my component order for the extra pieces I need to do not only the test build, but the uh, build of the units that I'm planning to build after the test units. Um, that was through um, LCSC. I think it's LCSC. I always, always get mixed up with their name. Uh, these guys. LCSC. There's some things I always get from these people. Such as... Most of the passives are well priced. Like they are across China actually in Asia. Um, better than buying them over here, particularly if you're buying reels. Um, they also, when it comes to things like connectors, they're much better priced as well. So things like the USB connectors. And I had some fun with the USB connectors. I, I've come back round to those, actually. I found um, an interesting new um, power delivery variant that is considerably less. Um, I can't actually use it in this case because I'm using the USB part of the power delivery connector. I'm using a D plus D minus for the um, uh, ESP32 C3 USB JTAC slash serial connection. So I need to have that. So there's quite a few things that I get from these guys. Uh, also, my inductors are cheaper from these guys. The diodes can be, if I find the right ones. The LEDs can be, so I tend to get LEDs from these guys. Um, things like um, diode protection, that stuff. Diode protectors for communications. What else? Um, resistors, capacitors, obviously. Uh, SD card sockets. I'm just trying to think what was on the um, last order. Well, we'll have a look in a minute because I've got the box. But anyhow, so there's quite a few bits that I tend to order from here. And that was just sitting on there saying, you know, it obviously been picked from the warehouse. and was just sitting there waiting I kept saying, you know, awaiting pickup by carrier, i.e. basically waiting for FedEx in this case to pick it up for ages and ages and ages. And then suddenly it said it picked up. And then within, I don't know, a few hours, it said it was in Charles de Gaulle Airport in Paris. It was really strange. So not only is the shipping itself a bit messed up, but also the tracking seems to be... Um, a bit off quite frankly you know the fact that it can go from waiting for car waiting for carry to pick up to Charles de Gaulle airport in like several hours is just nonsense it was really weird 
And then when I looked at it, I could see the entire history where it had been, and I hadn't seen any of those in-between steps. Um, and then it was with me the next day, because obviously it was in Paris, and then they got it over here overnight, and then it shipped it out on the van in the morning. So I got the components, and it was the components I was worried about. I was thinking, oh crikey, I'm going to get the boards now, having got the tracking code from Dale PCB for the order, and not had one from LCSC Electronics. I thought, oh, I'm going to get the boards, and then I'm not going to get the components. And I need all the components to be able to populate I can't half populate it. So... Um, yeah, it's kind of weird when suddenly it went from not even picked up to carrier to in Europe. Um, and then it arrived this morning. It was just bonkers, quite frankly. And now it's completely the other way around. Now I don't know what's happening with the PCB order. It could be the virus disrupting their shipping route. Well, uh, I mean, there is that, you know, I don't know if Shenzhen's still in lockdown. I'm presuming so. A lot of the cities that had these issues are in lockdown they still seem to be working um, making these boards but obviously what happens with shipping is the moment it sees all that going on they think oh well they're not going to be making stuff they're not going to be shipping stuff let's just you know take uh, some of the quantity out of the shipping system take some of the logistics out you know because it's otherwise we're going to be sending it around the world half empty kind of thing so, um, yeah, it's a bit bizarre, really. So, anyhow, I got the uh, components, so I should probably... I haven't really had a look in these yet. Let me just... Um, where's my pen knife? Let's see what we got, because I can't remember exactly what I ordered. Um, these books. Let's have a look what we got. And because I can only get certain components for them, I had to wait. Couldn't really get them locally. These don't pop very well, these ones. Let us see, what do we have here? So, uh, those are the inductors for the switch modes. These are the uh, LCD um, FPC connectors on a reel. And, you know, the 40 pin ones. These should be, let's have a look at one of these. These should be much higher quality. In fact, do I want to open it yet? That doesn't have any um, silicon in it. Might have a look at those later. These these ones. Remember, I had problems when I was making the um, mezzanine boards for these ones. Remember the old mezzanine boards, the old style. Those FPC connectors on there were really, really crap and they broke and I couldn't get a good contact with them but they were like ridiculously cheap so I thought I'd try them but these ones are proper ones uh, in fact I can't remember who the manufacturer is 
they're one of the uh, better known manufacturers. In fact, it may be a Western one. Uh, XF2M. Who is that that make those? So these are one of the more expensive parts. Um, who makes these? I think I've used these before on projects quite a long time ago. Um, I'm not sure if it was the same number of pins. Um, see if we can. Uh, yeah, Omron. So Omron are, uh, you know, I think they're a Western company actually. I mean, they've been around quite a long time. They make, they're well known for making connectors. But. Um, yeah they can be expensive uh hi laurie you haven't missed much mate there was about three restarts before i got a decent frame rate I had to reset the network i was just telling the story of um the fact that my pc that the shipping information and stuff is is bonkers it doesn't make any sense anyhow my boards are still in china but FedEx have apparently got it, and I've got a tracking number, although they don't seem to be moving anywhere fast at the moment. Whereas, you know, I've had a whole box of components from LC SC that I ordered after the boards. Uh, and I was kind of worried I'd get the boards and not the components. And of course it's completely the opposite. Uh, and as I just said in the um, in the stream, um, it suddenly went from waiting for carrier to be picked up to being in Charles de Gaulle Airport in Paris. It was bonkers. So um, yeah, and I was just talking about these um, connectors um, because I had so many problems with those mezzanine connectors. These ones. Um, are kind of known good ones. Um, they should be good quality. Anyhow, so I've got a you know a small reel of those. Um, these. That's for the uh, LCD connector on the um, Black Ice NXT board. So we'll see how they go. They look they look good. And the 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 way that the connector can work is it lifts up, and it. And it's actually a double-sided connection as well, which is good. So you get really good connection. And then it's like a lever and it goes down onto, onto it as well. And you can flip it up and flip it out. There's none of this trying to shove it in nonsense. You know. I need to take these out of their um, packets whilst I'm doing this. Because they take up a lot of room. Anyhow, how are you, Laurie? So much packing. So very much packing. Uh, inductors. Well, I need to put these somewhere. Let me put them in. Uh, here, maybe. Got a few of these. <laughs>
Well, whatever adhesive they use on these uh, bubble wraps, it's um, it didn't come off very well. So a bunch of smaller stuff. Uh, 120 kilo ohm resistor arrays. Oh, I picked up one of those touchscreen controllers. You know, we found the chip. Um, well, I ordered one as well because they sold them at LCLS. Might try that out at some point. Um, O402 resistors. Wow, what value are these? Doesn't actually say the value on here, really. 200. Very strange. Let's double check that. Oh, crystals. These are getting expensive now. I just want a quick look, make sure these are the 3225s. Yeah, they're the right ones. Yep. Them look like the right ones. I was a bit worried about those. Description was a bit weird. Um, 5.1 resistor arrays, arrays. Those are for the pull ups for the USB. Uh, oh, those are the LEDs. Let's have a quick look at these. Which ones are they? Yeah, these are the RGB LEDs. So I've had trouble with sizes on some of these. Some of these are a lot smaller. Than I wanted. Hopefully these will be the right size. I mean they're all a bit small anyhow, the new ones that I'm using. The RGB ones. Let's have a look. Let's have a look yeah, these look slightly bigger. He's probably right. Hope so. Cool. Laurie no, says it's fine. My Game of Life tweets got quite a few retweets. Yeah, it's kind of cool. I like the YouTube vid as well. I'd forgotten all about the gliders and all that stuff. I mean, it's years and years ago I played with that stuff. Oh, because Goram retweeted it. So it went out to the ECP5 crowd. Yeah, it's always worth tweeting, Laurie. I mean, if people don't, are not interested, then, then they ignore it. Just let it go past them, flow through them. But if it gets some traction, why not? Let people know. Um, 0402 resistors. This is really weird that they don't put the bloody value on them. Hold on. I don't really want to have to look these up every time. Damn. Ah, uh, more resistors. What are these? Oh. E26. Surface mount. Uh, these are the these are these um, 
new USB connectors that I want to check try. These are um, for power delivery only USB and they are a fraction of the price of the normal ones. And if you look closely, I mean the USB-C. So the shell is the similar, very similar. It's uh, the same manufacturer that make the USB-C ones that I already use. But if you look really closely, hold on, can you see it? You can look really closely at the um, connectors, maybe. Instead of having, what is it? 24 or 16 pins or whatever the normal ones have these only have um, like six I think it's six pins so it's just the ones you need for power delivery so you get um, the two CC lines which are what's used to negotiate the power delivery and you get V bus and ground. I think that's it. Two CCs, two V buses, and two ground. Six. So these are kind of cool. So I will probably do a um, a new footprint for these for the cat, so I can use these on uh, another project. As I say, I can't use these on the current board design because I actually need the D plus D minus. I need the data, not just the power. Um, as we've got more resistor arrays. Oh, these look smaller. Are these smaller? 1.5. Oh. Different sizes. Holy crap. Yes, I have. Oh, these are really tiny ones. Shit. That could be a problem. I'll come back to that. Um, more caps. Crap load of caps. Um, he's texting me now. My phone's really annoying me at the moment. It keeps pinging me, and I don't know what it's pinging about. So these are the same size again. What value are these? 2.4k resistors. I do hope I've got the right sizes. I'm going to have to double check that in a minute. Um, in fact, let me look now. So I know what the right ones are. Um, Should be the same as these. Yeah, they look about the same. Most of them are right. Looks like my 1K5 are uh, smaller ones. It's annoying when it happens. It's very easy to accidentally. When you're doing resistor arrays, the way the way that they're sized isn't always obvious because sometimes they may be categorised in four of 0402s or they may say what the resulting size is, like a 1206 or something. Or oh, sorry, 1206 I think is 40603s. So it's very easy to get mixed up. I had a problem actually with the, um, with these. These are a pain because the old PMOD, um, if you look closely, I don't know if you can see them below the digits there. You have an array. In fact, in some cases, because I ran out of this particular size, it's a really odd size 
it's uh, like four 0805s or something. They're a bit bigger because that's what I had when I designed it. And um, I just can't get the damn things anymore. So I have to manually solder four resistors in place of the uh, array. It takes ages. Uh, Um, shop key diodes, high current ones, up to three amps. That's for the uh, power and um, more regular four two resistors. More four two resistors. Some of these are odds and sorts. Not all of this is for the project. Um, more resistor arrays. These are these are current. Oh, the, oh, well, these are my current sensing resistors for the stepper board. Not the stepper board for the motor tile. Very important. These. Been waiting for these ones. Two hundred of them there. They're not cheap. Um, these, of course, are something they do very well. I haven't used these ones yet. Um, but when I do the HDMI tile, these are my HDMI connectors. I haven't tried these ones yet. But these are the full-size HDMI connectors, not the mini ones. It's going to go on the tile. like oh. what go back does it log me out why can't I see Normally, I think when I click on that, it should. Um, there we go. So that's the HDMI tile. Sorry, the digital audio video tile. Yeah. Um, and I've done the footprint for these. So, I mean, I don't know if it works yet because I haven't ever bought these ones before. So, that'd be cool. Big chunkers, the ginormous components. <laughs> That's good. We've got those now. So at some point, assuming that the um, that it works, we'll be able to try out the. Um, HDMI on the Black Ice NXT. What else have we got here? What have we got? Um, oh, yes, some Jack. These kind of keep going in and out of uh, stock. Again, if you look at the HDMI um, board here, you'll see the jacks on the side. So that's those on a reel, which is kind of cool. Uh, difficult to see. Nice. 
I've got a, quite a few of those. So those came. 3.5 mil headphone jack, they call that. It's not strictly true. Some bigger caps for um, electrolytics, surface mount electrolytics, for the tiles that need them, like the motor tile. And these are low profile ones, so they don't stick up too far. Because remember, we've only got like, we've got less than six mil clearing in between the tile and the board. So it can be tricky finding the um, right dimensioned electrolytics. So on to the bigger ones now. So yeah, this is a relatively small reel. Uh, in this case, it's the um, 0402 sized um, 22 picofarads. Uh, I'm not sure which ones those are used for. They might be used around the crystal or um, they might be used. Um, these need to go in a different place. They won't fit here. Let's just stack them for the moment. I've got to put in storage until the boards arrive. Um, they might be for. Um, The USB interface chip. Let's see other possibility. What do I have here? This is really weird. So seem to have two things in here. Female. Type C USB connectors. So they've, they've given me a partially, it's weird. Okay, what they've done here, they've given me partially loaded reel. Oh, it's because it's a small reel. I thought it would be bigger for the... Um, these are the uh, regular USB connections. And these are damn expensive. They've gone up so much. They used to be so much less um, in Asia, but they've gone right up. But I mean, this particular one as well, with the 16 pins or 24 pins or whatever. I think 16. These just seem to have shot up in price. But I know these work well. I've used these before. So they sent me that. And then in addition, they sent me loose stuff. So I'm gonna to have to attach that to the reel as well at some point. But I can use a loose stuff to do the manual placement and then keep the reel, reel for um, pick and place machine. It's kind of weird though. Seems to be very wide tape for these. They don't need to be that wide. What is that? Is that a 32 mil reel? Usually wide. Oh, it's a 24 mil. There's an awful lot of space on there. I'm surprised they had to go to a 24 mil. For that. There you go. I should probably keep those together then. In that case. Same one. Weird how they've done that with the reels. I thought they'd give me a bigger reel. There you go. Some strangeness. Right, I can keep those in there. Take that out. Strange that they've not put that in an anti static bag. I know they're only connectors, but hey.
Um, what do we got here? Again, they do, do populate these weirdly on reels. So I've got a reel of 100 ohm. Oh, these are resistors, so these are all different size. So, yeah, 0402 resistors. There's about oh, 10,000 on there. Ridiculous, isn't it? It's only a small reel, but you get 10,000 on there because they're so teeny tiny, you see. Um, the 470 NFs, which I use for decoupling, among other things. Again, there's probably 10,000 on here as well. Yeah, 10,000 on there. 0402 size. In fact, yeah, the 0402s. Um, this is weird. So one of the arrays did come on a reel, which is strange. These are for uh, these are series resistors for the data lines on the. Um, Ice logic bus, so that we get a good signal. But it's kind of only a partially populated reel. It is kind of weird how they do their packaging. It's a bit hit and miss. Sometimes you have to re-reel these things before you can use them on the pick and place machines and stuff. Uh, one more we got, and then we can move on. This is a. This is more like the size you expect for some of the larger components. Which one is this? Ah, oh, so these are the... Um, lovely moiré pattern there. But it's actually a pattern in the reel, not moiré. These are... just see how big that one is. Much bigger than my head. These are the SD cards on a reel. And I get through quite a few of these because this is I've used these before. I need to double check these actually because these are just slightly different, I think, from the ones I've had before. So I need to do some checks on this. Which again is why we have to do these um protos often. You can see the SD cards there. Uh, That's a biggie. I think that probably is a 32, isn't it? Or are these 24s as well? No, that's a 42 mil, uh, 32 mil reel. Dear messy. <sighs> Barely fits in my box. Right, good. That's nice. We like that. So no real surprises except this one, which I obviously got the size wrong on. It's going to be a pain. So what else have we been doing? I guess you bought extras. <laughs> well, actually, this wasn't a particularly big order. Um, I tended to buy just what I needed for a lot of things. But when it comes to things like buying a lot of those 0402 caps that I use on every project, then um, may as well buy a real. And they're very low cost. This one I've got to look at. I don't know how I managed to get the size wrong on that. These are mini, mini, mini ones. So I'm going to have to order some more of those. 
and I need those for driving the resistors. At least I know, maybe I can get a local RS order in just to cover that. That's the kind of stuff that you have to do. So that's good. So I pretty much have everything I expected. I don't think there's anything unexpected apart from those. I wonder if I've got any of these. I haven't got the spreadsheet open so I can't check what my current stock level is. Anyhow, so next part of the subject. So I still don't know when I'm going to get my boards. What it says is if you do the tracking, if I go back, hold on, yeah, it seems to be suggesting. Um, Next Tuesday, I think it was saying. Whether they stick to that or not is another question because um, functional. Because given what happened with that component order, it was. Um, didn't follow the um, what it was saying anyhow saying oh wait a minute look oh. okay so that's updated is that actually the same position it was before hold on let's have a look no that's changed so it's now in Hangzhou, which is, that's in Shenzhen. That's a region just north of Shenzhen, isn't it? God, I can't. So it has moved since Thursday. But anyhow, it's predicting um, that I'll have that on Tuesday. But we will see. Um... Yeah, we will see if that's when it arrives, but it will be nice if it does. Um, yeah, I'll keep an eye on that. So assuming that rides okay. I might have some boards by the next stream. That would be very cool. I can show you the boards. We will see. No promises, given the way that these others have gone. Um, so one of the things that I was playing around with, and I realized I've got to do, is whilst I'm waiting for this stuff, I know I haven't even built the boards yet. It's a bit premature, but I, I was thinking about the testing and stuff. So one of the things that I thought would be a good thing to sort out would be the being able to run tests from the host. Now, I had a conversation earlier with you, Laurie, about um, a bus. So as well as having the tiles, what I want to do is have be able to link them up on a bus. Um, I guess we could just use Wishbone for the moment. But that would enable, you know, enable me to send data over the bus from the STM32 over Quad SPI or SPI through a bridge onto the Wishbone and then activate different things on the different boards to, in order to do tests and stuff was my thinking um, and that was why I was asking today Laurie about the um, 
about the uh, control status register stuff. So I'm, I'm sure you, you guys are familiar with this. Um, nor, normally when you put peripherals onto like a, an SOC or something like that, you normally have a, some sort of bus and then for each of the peripherals you will have some special registers that are used to control that peripheral um, and allow you to get status of the peripheral as well as data and stuff. Um, these registers are commonly CSR registers, control state registers effectively. Now um, I know back in 2019 I think White Quark was playing around with the idea he had she had some initial ideas on the way that she was going to um, do this and she did um, it was on one of the issues on an old Enmigen issue and then she started a new one after the discussion which was more concrete and then something was put in place but I, I'm not entirely sure it was ever finished officially um, a bit like documentation I, um, I suggest but I think most of the implementations there and if you go and look on uh, yes so this was the I think this is the original one where she spoke about it and other people involved that were M labs and etc 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 and they talked about what the CSR functionality would need to do and then later I think um, there was another question here I struggled to find any documentation or tutorial on how to integrate design with the bus such as Axie or Wishbone and whether there's an option to automatically generate status and control registers which is what I was looking into um, and then White Quark, she says, um, this is now handled as part of the m Mijin SOC, or Amaranth SOC, in fact. So if you then go and have a look at Amaranth SOC, um, you can see, um, I don't think there's any examples, but there are some tests and things which I was looking at. Um noise in it. Hold it. Which one am I looking at here? Oh, these are the wrong ones, that's the events. And there seem to be two buses. Um so there seems to be something called the CSR bus, which I think is a slightly more simplistic bus than Wishbone. But I can't find details on this. I'd love to know more. Because simple is good. Um, so here, if you look at these tests, you can see how uh, these CSR registers are created. So if you look at this example here, um, the element here is, I think it's the number of bits, I think, and that's where it's, it, this can be read, read, write, or write, I think. Um, this is, uh, presumably an eight bit register, so she's just, if, testing different sizes here. There's actually a zero one here, which is really odd. I don't quite get that, but still. Um, here, look, you can see what she's talking about with the interface, the bus. So it looks quite it's slightly different from the wishbone in this case, isn't it? No. 
Yeah, it doesn't have anything acknowledge. But there you go. And she tests the interface and stuff here. So you can get some idea of how these are constructed. And I and I couldn't find an example, so I spoke to Laurie and asked him if he knew knew of anyone that was or had seen any instances of people using the Amaranth SOC. And he pointed me to um These guys, yeah, Lambda Concept, which you've probably heard of. They use a lot of M and stuff. And in here, uh, this is one of their new base classes that they've developed called Peripheral, which integrates in. So if you want to create a peripheral, in their case, they are defaulting to Wishbone bus. But if you want to create a peripheral that uses the automated CSR creation um, they, they've created a base class here so if you create a peripheral that extends using multiple inheritance both peripheral and elaborable or whatever um, is it elaborable I always forget um, that you normally do on um, Amaranth then you inherit these kind of superpowers for the bus. So here there's an example that shows you how you can use that. Um, elaboratable, that's what it is. Elaboratable or is it elaboratable? Please correct me. So here what he's saying is you do, you call a super in it, which is... What happens with multiple inheritance? Does it call both of the units of these two? I can't remember. Anyhow, so bank um, is basically, if you like, the thing that holds the CSR registers. Um, so you've got this um, helpful built-in uh, call. And then you can create a new you know, CSR register here, he's saying or she's saying, or he's saying, I don't know who wrote this, actually, um, at Lambda Sock. Self.foo, so you've got a underscore foo register, which is a CSR register. So in the background, that's creating one of those elements and adding it to, um, to the bus effectively, although it doesn't do that directly because it um, we haven't assigned the bus at this point, I don't think. Anyhow, whatever. Um, but you'll see the syntax is the same here. So it's an 8-bit read or an 8-bit write. So they're creating two CSR registers, one called foo, one called bar. Um, the ready thing here is to do with something else, and we need to come back and have a look at this. This enables events, I think. They have a thing called events, which may or may not be based on interrupts. I'm not sure. I haven't dug down into that yet. Um, then it's saying here, bridge. They're creating a bridge to the bus here. And they're also adding some IRQs in. Um, I'm not sure what they technically mean by the term bridge here. Does bridge mean something that can link one bus to another, or does it also mean something that can control the bus? I can't remember what that terminology means. It's a bit ambiguous to me. Um, and there they're adding it, you know, in the normal fashion as a sub module. So you can create a peripheral that has this. CSR support that will be bound to a wishbone bus which is kind of cool and anyhow I saw some of this um, thanks to Laurie pointing it towards to me so um, 
definitely want to use what's there rather than recreate the wheel here because I need to create CSR registers such that anything that I have on a tile I can put onto um, whatever the bus is in this case if we just use a wishbone bus certainly to begin with then we can then put in which I think terminology wise is a is a bridge from you know a Q spy bridge if you like from the STM32 um, and in fact so then Laurie started pointing to some work that he'd already done based on the lambda sock stuff um, so here is a wish under let me just post this so that you guys have got a link I should also put that in the um, in the chat. So this was an example that Laurie pointed to, which he'd worked on after looking at the Lambda sock stuff. I think this peripheral. Uh, just resets or halts uh, the processor. That he has synthesized. Um, and if we go up a level, he's using might CPU, which is a very small one. I don't know much about this. How big is this, um, Nori? This might CPU is it like really miniature? Tiny CPU converted from Ferrolog. Let's have a quick look. This is my attempt to see how small I can make a useful processor. It's hot. Excuse me, Harvard architecture instructions and data stored separate memories. Data memory is 8 bit wide, there's 256 locations. Instruction memory is 11 bits wide. Each instruction has 11 bits, free opcodes, da da. Right, so it's really simple. I think I have seen this before, but it's a very long time ago. I mean, look at the instructions. Massive set of instructions. Do 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 do. Very cool. Presumably, do you have to write assembly programs for this? Because there won't, probably won't be a um, compiler. Anyhow, so he's he's creating a very small soft core. Um, in my case, we don't. In the case that I wanted, I don't actually need um, the soft core, although it is quite useful in some cases. But it adds another layer of complexity. Because you've got to program that as well, and I'm trying to avoid that from a test point of view. Uh, Lloyd says, yes, just assembly. But then again, it's not exactly a lot of instructions. It's probably quite easy. It's nice. So anyhow, um, in this example, he's got a CPU. I don't know what might... What, CPU one is, is you presumably modified this somehow. So what are you doing here? You're adding in some LEDs.
Wait a minute, what is this based on? Okay. Check the memory. I'm yawning a bit. So you're putting them in the instruction uh, space or bus. Okay. Just diagnostics, right? It is a nice, simple thing, I can see. Which is kind of cool. So that can drive it in assembly, which is nice. But then the interesting thing here was um, actually you showed me a separate UART bridge for the bus, which is that different from this one? It's just a different implementation. So the UART bridge here is the same sort of thing. It's so that you can put um, so you can use the bus from a serial port, right? That's what you're meaning as a UART bridge here. So it will decode over a UART data, which it then interprets, decodes or whatever and puts, and basically operates the wishbone with that data. Am I correct in my assumption? But I notice here your UART bridge. Yeah, no, that's fine. UART bridge. So you've got wishbone interface, which is a 16 bit width. Only address width of 10. Um, so you're using the async serial, which comes from Amaranth. Well, in this case, Enmigen Sock, which is now Amaranth Sock, I presume. Oh, the standard I/O, Amaranth standard I/O. Yeah. Uh, command length address data bytes. Da -da 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 -da. So basically what your machine does is it looks for the receive command. What's that? A byte, presumably. Um, then it next looks for the length of the data that you're going to send. So it goes to the data sense. It takes the length. Um, and this is wishbone, so you're acknowledging. So, Lloyd's just replying, actually, yeah. The UART bridge lets you set the code and data from the serial port on the host. The control peripheral maps specific addresses that you write to halt and reset the CPU. So that was the other one, but yeah. So, receive address. So how many bytes you're going to send the address from. Um, da -da -da -da. Then you handle a write. Oh, then, so because it's a receive, that's part of the receive, it then... address and then what does it go to so it depends whether you're reading or writing or you're going on to the next command 
So if it's a right, you then start decrementing the bytes down, which you've taken from up here, and the received length, and then you're accessing the bus. Write the data, yeah, so you're doing a wishbone transaction. And then you're acknowledging and going back to a command, or if it's a read, you're doing a wishbone transaction, which is a read. And then you're reading the data incrementally. And then you're sending the data back. Is that byte by byte? Yeah, I kind of get it. And then you've got to test it, does that? Um, it's been a while since I wrote this stuff. Not sure how much I tested it. I did not write that you are bridge. I think it came from the Gram project. Mm. Okay. Anyhow, it's the kind of stuff we need to potentially look at. So this whole thing, quite nicely, and there's some tests in there, um, is capable of doing some fairly simple wishbone bus control. In this case, an example, control peripheral. Or, presumably, because you've got some memory here, you can read and write from memory as well. Is that right? I didn't check. We've got some sort of memory here. Uh, SRAM. Using SRAM. Because this was to run on the Black Ice MX. So that's the external SRAM. And you're using the driver from Lambda SOC to do this, right? That's the external SRAM chip. This is a driver for, right? I presume. Not the internal memory. Be nice if it was the internal memory, it'd be easier for us in this case. No, Lambda SOC calls BRAM SRAM. Oh, so it is the internal memory. Oh, why do they call BRAM SRAM? That's a very odd thing to say. Why not just call it BRAM? Okay, that's good. That makes it easier if we want to use this code um, for the ILB. I was worried because uh, I was thinking, well, if it's using the external um, uh, SRAM chip, we won't be able to use it on the ILB. We'll have to do create uh, an internal memory using, you know, the built-in 16K on the ICE 40 HX. But if that actually means BRAM, that is the internal memory, right? Size 256, data width 16. So you've got 256 for code and 256 for data. Cool. Excellent. So we can pretty much port this then safely on the ILB when it's ready. I just need something really simple, something that can read and write to a bit of memory um, and something that can read and write to a bunch of CSR registers. One thing I noticed that you haven't implemented is any CSR registers because you're um, control peripheral is so elementary that you haven't even bothered for that of course because you've just got two lines of halt and uh, reset not really much need for a control and status register <laughs> um, so we'd have to add that in but you know it's 
the structure is already there I'm thinking so once again I'm just thinking of uh, kidnapping some of your code Laurie like I always do some of your uh, RTL they call uh, Amaranth RTL or Gateway I guess Now I can't use the UART bridge on ILB because that is not, there isn't any UART enabled by default. What I actually want to do is do um, SPY and QSPY instead of UART. But it might be good to start just with a UART. There's a couple of ways we could do that. By linking wires, for example. Uh, the other thing is we might be able to use the prototype I already have that I built back from December. The board down here, below me. Not physically below me, because it's actually over there. But on the screen. Because we do, if I recall... Hold on, let me just open. I'm pretty sure he had no. On the original uh, Ice Logic deck. Uh, which is what I think I called it. I don't have the original one, but I have a slightly modified one called the Logic Deck 1 on this machine. Um, that'll be close enough. I'm just trying to import that into um, KiCad. Hold on. I'm pretty sure that we can um, do that. So let me just change the screen again so that you can see what I'm talking about here. Uh, let's turn on the keycad. Let's, let's put that in front uh, there's a really weird import bug here means I always have to get rid of this so if we look or oh, I hate that it's white is it what how do you change the default colors for the color palette Display options, colors, theme, keycad default, classic. Oh, it's worse. New theme. No, I'm not going to start a new one. Open theme folder. Theme folder is empty. Okay, I'm going to have to sort that out some other time. I prefer dark backgrounds, but here we go. So, um, the thing to note is these FPGA pins on the original design, the prototype I've got here, I know this is a one version beyond that, but the schematic was still the same from this point of view. We have DSO1, DSO2. These were TX and RX on the original one and they connected to these two I'm pretty sure oh, damn it I wish I had the version before this on this machine I'd be able to double check because um, this is the version that came after the prototype that I built 
Um, damn. How can I easily check that? Strange that it didn't copy out, copy over those old files. Must have been a selective copy. I'm pretty sure it was these two are connected to the STM30TX and RX that mean that we can have a UART conversation possibly on the prototype board. Ha ah. hmm it's a shame I don't have that diagram. But I was thinking of doing it in stages. So the first bit would be to try and port Laurie's code. Let's just go back to that, hold on. This code instead of it running on well there's two things. First thing is this runs on um, I think it runs on black ice, but I could be wrong. Platform Black Ice MX. There we go. So we need. Oh, you can't see that. It's gone off the bottom of the screen. I do apologise. Oh look, how very annoying. Let me change this screen so I can have it match. Yeah. So we'd have to convert it from Black Ice MX to the ILB or Black Ice NXT. Um, well, in fact, it was called Ice Logic Deck ILD for Duncan. So we'd have to change that. This SRAM, which is supposedly BRAM, will be the same. It's the same chip. Uh, these pins will be different. So we'd have to convert these resources. Oh, wait a minute. Those aren't the built in LEDs. Those are on a P mod, right? Sorry. So we'd have to convert. How many are there? What is the LEDs 8 1? Is that just two LEDs? No, wait a minute, pins. Are these 8 each? 1, 2, 3. So you're using 16 LEDs. Uh, on the tile, we've got 12. You don't really need the LEDs. No, but we, we would need something, obviously. That's all I'm thinking. So I'd need to replace the LEDs here. Um, what I probably want to do is create a peripheral, an LED peripheral. Rather than just the control one, have a peripheral that has some LEDs so that we can um, you know, put numbers, and then I'll add in things like tiles and stuff, so we can start adding in 
the seven segment tile as well as the LED tile. Yeah, I, so Laurie's saying I just put the Mite CPU current instruction and opcode on the LEDs. Interesting. Okay. It's probably less useful in my case because we don't even need the core really, but there you go. So, um, yeah, so the other things that we'd have to change are we'd have to change all the NMIGEN references to Amaranth ones. We'd also need to make sure we're using the new newer Lambda SOC that supports Amaranth. The latest commit uh, supports Amaranth, I noticed. So if I go back and look at uh, this on their site, on their, on GitHub, they're using Amaranth rather than NMIGEN. Uh, if you look at the top, the last commit was migrate to Amaranth, which is cool. So we'd have to do it in a couple of phases. The other problem we have Wait a minute, let's look at your tests. What do you actually send? Bridge test case. So is that the read command, is it? Why are these all numerical rather than constants or something? Basically, you're se sending a um, single address. To read that address. Um, and you're checking that you got that back. Oh, no, that's what you're putting. onto the data bus, then you're checking what you get back. I see. From the host you can do wishbone util serial device. What's wishbone util? 
Um, Oh, it's from Litex. Cool. So you're leveraging what's already there in Litex. That's nice. Nice. Cool. Well, that's simple enough, isn't it? See something else? Right. Four hundred. Uh, So yeah, I will probably reuse your code, I think. It will require, um, I will borrow it, change it, and not give it back. I'll update it for Amaranth, and also for um, ILD rather than Black Eyes MX. See, if I can get that working, and know that that works, then the next stage would be doing the SPI QSPI version of that, I guess. I don't know if we want to do that straight away. Oh, sorry, I'm yawning so much. Definitely Friday. Oh, I'll take my glasses off. Hey, I'm a little tired, I think. I've got decorating to do this weekend. Oh, what joy. I need to do some painting of the adjacent room. Don't you just love decorating? Not. Whispering new tools. Let's have a look. Oh, this is it written in Rust? That's nice. I like that. Wishbone tool is useful for interacting with internal wishbone bridge on a device. Some of the things you can do with wishbone tool peeking and poking memory, similar to using dev mem2, testing memory and bridge link quality, exposing wishbone bridge to ethernet. Hey. Exposing a wishbone bridge to Ethernet. Interesting. Uh, currently supported wishbone bridges include USB for use with voluntary USB such as on FOMO. That's onboard USB on the FPGA, right? Uh, serial, generic UART. SPI, so they do have SPI here using two, three, or four R SPI from Spybone. Okay, so are they doing this from a BeagleBone board using this my SPI interface? Is that what they're doing? And using the Linux SPI driver? Presumably, I bet that's what this is. Let's have a look. Oh, right, that doesn't link anywhere. Good. Let's 
try something else. I'm guessing it's part of the beagle bone board. I'm not getting any hits here. GitHub, here we go. Oh, it's Zobs. The ability to bridge Wishbone is an incredibly powerful one. However, the various bridges can be rather heavy in terms of resource usage. This presents a simple bridge that operates over SPI. The Wishbone bridge plus should go in a clock domain that's roughly four times that of your clock signal for example if your clock signal is 12 megahertz place the bridge in a 48 megahertz domain hmm. interesting Protocol for the spy bridge is big Indian. Right. Zero one. Address, 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 address. Four bytes, presumably. Operation. Read it, oh one. B W V V V V V V V. That's a V protocol. It's confusing. Right. Value, B is for value. Okay. It's possible to enable free wire mode. Maybe we could extend this to Quad SPI, but I'm presuming he's written this for Linux, right? Um, Lloyd's just sent me another link for the code as uh, raspberry pi spy yes yeah, so it's just going to use the spy driver presumably Some threaded version of it. Oh, 
seeing pins here. It's manipulating the pins directly, right? What? No, he's not. So maybe this isn't the Linux. Hold on. What is this? Spin sleep. Oh, they're using the standard library. It must be running on Linux. Um. PAL. Don't know what that library is. It's for the Raspberry Pi access layer of some sort. I'm not familiar with it. Interesting. Oh, pal. We're going deep. Off. Um. off piece a little here but it's interesting hope you don't mind our pal provides access to raspberry pi's gpio i2c pdrm spi new op peripherals for a user-friendly interface Ooh, i didn't even know about this this is quite cool in addition to peripheral access RPAL also offers support for USB to serial adapters. The library can be used in conjunction with a variety of platform agnostic drivers for its embedded HAL trait. RPAL requires Raspberry Pi OS or similar. Recent Linux distribution of GNU and MUSL Libc targets are supported. Wowza, that's cool. I like that. Oh, what's interesting? Uh, they do GPI, I2C, PWM, SPY, UART. What's on the system stuff? There's more information. SPY. Our pal provides access to the available spy buses by using the spy device interface through dev spy b. Nice. That's interesting. So basically you just enable it in the device tree using the Raspberry Pi config. And then you can use that. That's kind of handy from a testing point of view. 
And I guess we could also write some Rust code that ran on the STM32 that used the spy wishbone as well. Interesting. Gives us some options. Nice, thanks for that link, um, Laurie. Really interesting. Up to six SPIs. Really? Nice. Very good. Very useful. Shannon didn't have quad spy as well. But we can do that later. That is really interesting and rather useful. I've now got a crap load more tabs open. So what else? So yeah, they talk about using spy, Ethernet. That would be really cool. Can't easily do that though. When we do the Ethernet tile, it might be possible. UDP via Etherbone. Yeah, that would be nice. One thing I'd really love to do, years ago, when I was working on um, an XMOS based product, um, I needed to use network interfaces to test it, but at the time we didn't have, we weren't at the stage where we had an Ethernet interface. But what we did was we used a CDC driver that supports um, Ethernet over USB. I forget what it's called. There's two. There's a Unixy one is a um, Windows one, and they're not the same, but they're very similar. Um, so it's basically, it's a CDC class that acts like it's a, an Ethernet connection, or like an Ethernet Mac. So when I, were write, when I was writing the tests on the hosts, which by the way, that was in Rust all those years ago because I, I thought I'd play around with Rust at that point. I was using a network library to do the testing and Wireshark and a bunch of other things. It's a real shame that there isn't a CDC network driver because that's a really cool way of doing your testing. Basically, when you plug you, if you're using the CDC like um, network device, when you plug your USB in, it just comes up as a, a network port and then you can use IF config to configure it, etc. You can then talk to it over the network using all sorts of clever stuff like Wireshark and things. Uh, and in that case, I was running like this Femto IP um, that someone had developed on XMOS. And I was just literally using UDP packets to exchange information. And in some cases, just using Ethernet frames, which was kind of cool. But it was a great way of doing testing on the, uh, you know, DUT. But I haven't seen a Rust CDC class that supports the network. Um, what is it? I can't remember what they're called. Hold on. Ethernet over USB.
Uh, communication device classes. Remote Endis. R Endis, a Microsoft vendor protector. Ethernet control model, ECM. An Ethernet emulation model, EEM, and a network control model, NCM. The latter three are part of a lot part of the larger communication device class. Um, the RNDIS specification available from Microsoft. I wasn't using that. I was using one of the. I don't know whether it was the EEM or the NCM or something like that. Could have been the ECM. I might be able to find the source. Uh, there we go. This was part of the code that I was using back then. Uh, CDC EDC. CDC EDC, which is CDC EDC EDC. Didn't this do EDC? What? Let's have a look. Hold on. No, that's the hierarchical state machine side of it. Let me find the low level. Uh, XUD ECM, maybe. BCD, the bonus vendor ID. USB CDC. ECM subclass. Why is it referred to as the abbreviation is different, which is really weird. Or is it just mixed rearranged? Is that what it is? They refer to it so in my code here I was using ECM. Ethernet control module, probably, or something like that. What are they saying here? Ethernet control model, there we go. That's the mode. Yeah, and I haven't seen one of those in Rust, but CDC ECM. Let me just do a search. I haven't actually searched for this. It will be interesting, Rust.
she's four years old. I've been working on USB stacks for a couple of different MCUs. Da -da -da -da. HID, CDC, ACM, CDC, EM, and hopefully CDC, ECM soon. Who's this? So this was actually before they had the USB stuff working on the STM32s. Interesting. Where is this guy? Does he have any repos when he's done this stuff? No, is the answer. Doesn't appear to be anything um, that we would class here. Yeah, what's this USB communication device class? Dock, right? No, it's What is this? Let's see. No, I can't see anything. Not for Rust. Unfortunately. 
Anyhow, gone down a bit of a rabbit hole. Right. Um, hmm. I'd still like to do that at some point. That would be useful. So, um, I could probably use the spy bridge. I've never used Valentry uh, USB, by the way. But I think the spyway would be good. So I'd have to look at how it's implemented on here. And maybe do a Rust spy implementation. Stolen from this. Not that necessarily runs on SPI, but runs on, um, on the STM32. Oh, excuse me. Because that's a good cheat sheet, good cheat example. I mean, it's actually slightly more complicated because it's threaded and stuff, and I probably wouldn't need any of that. Right, I think so. Unless there are any questions about stuff that we covered tonight and talked about, we've really just meandered, quite frankly. Um, I think I'm going to call it a day or evening because I probably just need to chill out a bit and I will have a look at um, probably porting maybe porting Laurie's code for the lambda sock stuff so if we can get that working first and then looking, maybe doing a spy version. That'd be cool. Right. Um, I think Laurie may be typing something. There may be a question before we go. Uh, just running my wishbone lander on the Black Eyes MX seems to work. Cool. I don't think it'd be hugely difficult to port to um, Black Ice NXT. In fact, I can probably port it to the um, Ice Logic deck, you know, my early prototype. That would not be too hard. The CPU runs so slow that you can see the LEDs changing. <laughs> what frequency are you clocking it at? To order. Okay, keep these on my desk so I remember. Hopefully, at some point. There's a couple of things I still need to get. I need to order replacement for these because these are obviously the wrong size. I might have a look around. I might have some kicking around. Enough for the moment. Um, but I also need to order some ESP32 C3 modules at some point. I'm not sure where I'm getting those from yet the only other thing I haven't got for the build. I saw I post typing but maybe he stopped. And hang for a few more minutes I'm gonna have no I'm not gonna have one of those. 
I'm going to resist eating those. <clears throat> Ipo says, yeah, just got a few sea freeze. Are they dev boards? I post. Which ones did you get? Did you get the expressive ones or a different one? We must see free mini. I don't not sure what those ones are. AliExpress ones. Let's have a look. I've ordered a bunch of stuff off Ali as well that I need, but God knows how long that's going to take. Um, C3 Mini. Sorry, this item is no longer available. Did you buy them all? I post. Didn't leave any for anyone else. I was probably going to pick up one of the expressive ones. Probably a bit more expensive. But it doesn't really matter, I don't think. This guy's video is a good description of it. I'll have a look at that. Cool. Yeah, well, they've obviously sold out. Maybe they didn't have many in stock. 236 orders. Or is that for the person selling? rather than those themselves. Nolin. Why do I recognise the name Weemoss? Is it a copy of Weemoss? Is that what it is? Interesting. I really wish the US or UK was creating risk five chips. Or reasonable prices. Yeah, don't we all? The Gap 8 is the only EU chip and it's crazy priced. Isn't that the... Um, um, isn't that out of the... Bologna University project? I can't remember what it's called. They do a series of pro, pro processors. Um... And though those they tend to be much higher performance now. So they do things like multi cores and accelerated risk fives and all sorts of stuff like that. I think the gap eight might be one of those. Uh, I can't remember what they're called.
Damn it. Oh, who me? What is the name of the organization? We came out of Bologna University. I remember meeting the guys that did it. Hold on. Uh, Green wave technologies. No, I think there's something different. I'm getting confused. Who am I thinking of? Um, the name of the group I think they went on to become part of the European efforts Um, Arnold chips, that doesn't ring a bell. Um, Really annoying that I can't remember the name. But it's really well known. Well, within certain European uh, chip design circles. Sock demon. Um, what else can I look for? Or comp.
is this is where I met them. So they must have been talking here. And it was actually hosted at the uni. Um, low risk. Uh, boom. Pulp. Pulp, yes. That was it. I think that was it. Maybe it was pulp, and then that became something else, actually. Pulp platform. Pulpismo, pulpino, open pulp. Yeah, there's all sorts of things that developed out of it. Um, yeah, pulp platform, here we go. These are the guys. Well, I'd, mm, yeah. They they teach SOC design at the university. So a lot of these projects are purely academic. But, look. If you look here. Development boards on the side. Look, the following companies sell development boards with chips based on our pulp system. Green Waves sells a development board of their Gap 8 chip. So the Gap 8 obviously comes from the original pulp designs. Open ISA org sells the RV 32M1 Vega. What's that one? Not heard of that. Hmm. So that's a wireless board. Uh, AI deck. Wowzer. So it's got a gap eight in it. Is that for a UAV application? I guess, yeah. I mean, the gap eight is kind of aimed at UAVs, among other things. Don't know how much they charge for these things. That's quite a lot. Interesting. Um, green waves. Yeah, they're not cheap, are they? They're also available to buy at seed. Yeah, it's quite expensive. Interesting. Yeah, I haven't spoken to these guys in years because we haven't been to the conferences where we normally meet them. They are talking about having one in September this year, though. I think it might be on. Although I don't know where. They were talking before the pandemic and stuff. The next destination was supposedly Amsterdam. but Because it's a different place every year. Um, Hello, Twinkles. Um, yeah, 
I can't see any other examples of boards. Not from these guys. Anyhow, right, let's call it a day. I'll probably stream again on Wednesday. And who knows? Maybe, just maybe, I might have some boards. But I wouldn't guarantee it. Okay, folks. So, ciao. Speak to you on Wednesday. I will be down on Discord, obviously, to continue such conversations.